Welcome back everyone. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done any kind of videos, um, which isn't really out of the norm uh, for me, uh, nor is making low quality videos. However, um, this is probably going to be one of my uh, more exciting videos. Um, it has to do with uh, accidental byproducts in a home lab. Um, recently, I was uh, fooling around uh, different ways of oxidizing iron two uh, ions into iron three, so I could come up with uh, pure iron three oxide. Um, I already have uh, more efficient ways. And uh, so I've got, you know, a bag full of iron oxide that, uh, you know, is not attracted to a magnet. Um, and the reason that uh, I am trying to get very pure uh, rust, basically, is because of my desire to make uh, synthetic uh, sapphires and rubies at home. Although the iron is not required for the ruby mixture, uh, sapphire, on the other hand, does require it. So this is uh, one of my batches. I guess that's uh, uh, batch one. Um, I've got uh, I think four different batches that I've made um, but I keep them labeled. Um, so I guess in a way this is also a little update video on where I'm at with uh, uh, synthesizing corundum and uh, I can tell you I'm not any further than uh, the last videos. I've, I've not had the time or uh, the financial resources of uh, uh, completing my Vernwell uh, furnace. So I've just been uh, doing what I can in the meantime, fooling around with experiments, making metal salts and uh, really studying copper, iron, um, nickel, uh, manganese, chromium, uh, you know, just a number of things. But anyhow, back on target. What happened the other day was I made this accidental byproduct and you can see just how very little is here. I mean, it's a very tiny amount, you know, it's like uh, probably about the same amount of substance that you would see in a little salt packet from McDonald's. Um, I've got the pencil here for size comparison. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this and wrap it up in that foil and show you just how dangerous this substance is. Um, I had the iron oxide that uh, I needed to further oxidize into iron 3 and uh, yeah I had uh, my rust sitting in um, acetone because I wanted it to dry faster but I thought hey you know let's see uh, you know if I can oxidize this further in the acetone and that way I don't have to worry about you know putting it back in water and waiting so anyhow I put in some of this uh, the 35 percent food grade hydrogen peroxide into this bit of uh, acetone with uh, basically rust sitting at the bottom of the flask. And man, just a very tiny amount. I mean, I, I probably put in like seven, maybe 10 drops of uh, that 35% hydrogen peroxide into, I guess about uh, 10 milliliters of acetone. Uh, this is not supposed to be any kind of instructional video on making this, but this is acetone peroxide. It is a primary high explosive, I came to find out. Um, when I saw these little white crystals form, I did not expect anything other than seeing iron oxide. So I'm like, what's this white crusty stuff on here? I, I know I flush it out, you know. So I get online and I'm searching up all the different... Uh, ingredients I have which is you know rust acetone hydrogen peroxide and that's it well apparently that's how easy it is to make it it's uh, one of the most common lab accidents especially for home chemists uh, that result in finger amputations um, and it can be immediate amputation this isn't like you you devastated your finger and the doctor's got to no no you can blow off your finger with just a small amount and i'm guessing i'm guessing half of this pile could do a, a tremendous amount of damage um and i'm going to show you just how explosive this is what i'm going to do here uh this is really difficult to do with just one hand I really feel uncomfortable handling 
this stuff, but since it is open, it, it doesn't have uh, any confined space to uh, to do, uh, uh, I guess, that much damage. I've uh, lit off just a tiny bit, and it just immediate like flame that's just you know split second. Um, and so what I will do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put some of that in this uh, little piece of sandpaper before I transfer it into here, just so you can see how very little it is. So uh, here we go. Okay, so here's uh, the amount that I measured into this little piece of sandpaper. It's an incredibly small amount. Uh, I am not going to close my fingers up around this, and uh, I have to be very careful how I fold it up in this little piece of aluminum foil because this is a primary high explosive and uh, I would definitely say this is probably more explosive than uh, nitroglycerin and I would say uh, stability wise um, it's probably around uh, the same degree of uh, stableness uh, as nitro um, I really don't know I've only ever made one drop of nitroglycerin just to see if it truly was as easy as um, it was made out to be, and yes, it is. Uh, this is even easier, because like I said, this was just completely made on accident. So anyhow, uh, before I make this video too boring, I am going to uh, wrap that up in the foil. Again, I'm going to have to pause uh, the video here so that uh, I can focus on this and not damage uh, my fingers or anything in the process, so I'll be right back. All right, so now I have got uh, the acetone peroxide wrapped up in this little piece of foil. Again, you can see just how small it is. Uh, it's almost paper thin there. Um, like I said, this is not a tutorial video. Um, and it's not like it's incredibly uh, sealed up. It's just kind of pressed in there a little bit. The stuff uh, can be uh, friction and contact sensitive. So I had to be very, very careful folding this up. So I will be setting it off with the lighter and you'll see exactly why this stuff is so dangerous. So here we go. I guess it's not that impressive. Um, <laughs> the first one that I did, uh, I set off quite a bit more than that. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do another one here. Uh, uh, this stuff just makes me really nervous. Uh, the first one was, uh, I don't know, probably about uh, 10 times more explosive than that. Uh, unless, yeah, there's no way that it all didn't go off because I, I had it packed in there. Um, maybe because the first one I actually did, uh, I hit it with a hammer and uh, it didn't go off. So I, it's not at that point yet where it is contact uh, sensitive. So, um, yeah, this video is getting kind of long. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to put a, a, a bit in, into some foil. And uh, <laughs> I guess I'll smack it with a hammer. And hopefully, you know, everything goes all right. I'll be right back. Okay, just so you can see how much is in there. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit. Uh, it's slightly more than uh, the first bit of it. Um, you know, there's what's left of the pile, which is... Uh, come on, focus. Um, so it's really not a whole lot there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this compressed and it should be a lot bigger bang. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Um, let's see if this uh, does the same thing. And you can just see how incredibly that thin that is. Uh, I don't know if I can get out of focus lock to work. But yeah, I mean, that, that's super thin. So, um, yeah. If I sound a bit nervous, it's because I am. And uh, here we go. Yeah, you can see just how uh, <laughs> sensitive this stuff is. Uh, quite a bit of expansion there. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, yeah, this is a, a very, very common accidental byproduct made in the lab which results in uh, unfortunate loss of limb um, as I did some of my research into acetone peroxide or otherwise known as TATP 
uh, it has been used in terrorist attacks. Uh, it's very difficult stuff to handle, apparently. Um, like I said, this stuff was made on accident. This is what I had decanted and it crystallized in uh, a flask. So the rest of this, I I'm either just gonna, you know, light it off. I do not want this stuff in my possession. Um, but I, I'm, I just wanted to do this video just so people are, are, are aware, uh, amateur chemists are aware of some of the, the risks that we take that uh, you're completely unaware of. Um, something like acetone and hydrogen peroxide. I mean, those are very, very common chemicals for anybody to have in their household. Uh, and especially amateur uh, chemists. I don't see this uh, as something that's uh, difficult to come into contact because it really, like I said, it, it, it's just so easy to accidentally make. Um, and luckily I had uh, researched up and found out exactly uh, what it was before I uh, had let everything completely dry and tried to scrape it off. Um, this stuff I pretty much let dry. Uh, on a filter paper and then just kind of let it fall onto that piece of paper uh, it's weird that uh, it's not contact explosive but I'm guessing it has to have a certain pH for that uh, I don't know <laughs> like I said this is no tutorial video it's just more of a an awareness video and just to stay safe you know read all your MSDS sheets uh, get online uh, I highly suggest Science Madness forums, um, but uh, just the most simple, tiny little home lab experiments that uh, you might uh, decide to do uh, could result in something very unintentional. Like I said, I, I was just trying to purify rust <laughs> for my sapphire mixture. I've got, uh, you know, of course, I've got the titanium dioxide. I've got uh, aluminum oxide by the pounds, uh, and then, you know, I just mix in a little bit of rust. Uh, I do both uh, pyrophoric iron, uh, or otherwise, you know, iron 1 oxide, or I'm sorry, iron 2 oxide, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, it's just way too easy to, to have an accident. So if you made it this far into the video, I, I really thank you. Um, please uh, don't take this for granted. Make sure you're always safe. And that's it. Till next time.